Today's video, we're going to be talking about the right way to think about scales. And I think this is one of the most important things that you could possibly learn because I keep seeing so many people who are not thinking about scales in the right way. And we're going to fix that today in this lesson. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So we got a couple of things on the screen here. You see in the upper right hand corner, we actually have a C major scale that's written out, and it's a very small C major scale pattern. Not the entire fretboard, because we're just gonna talk about this concept, and it's gonna be simpler if we just deal with a small area of the fretboard, and then you can expand the concept completely to the whole entire rest of the fretboard afterwards, uh, assuming that you know the notes that are in a given key that you're playing in. If you notice in that scale diagram, there are some notes that are green and I'm going to explain in just a moment why that is. So first of all, when we're thinking about any scale, the step one is gonna be just knowing what the notes are in the scale, right? So in the C major scale, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. So they're on the top left of, sorry, in the left-hand side there on the top, that's what we have written out, the notes in the C major scale. And we can also number those notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's really important in any key to number the notes because really in every single key, Number one is gonna sound and feel the same. Number two is gonna sound and feel the same. Number three, four, five, six, seven, and one. They're all gonna sound and feel the same. It's just gonna be a bit different because we're in a different key. But relatively speaking, those are gonna be the same. So we're blowing through a couple of things here. The next thing is you should know the diatonic triads or diatonic chords in a key. So if you don't know what that word diatonic means, it's very simple. Diatonic means according to the key. So what are all the chords that we get from the notes in the key? So just how we numbered every one of the notes in the key, we can build a chord from each one of the notes in the key. And it's a very simple process. For example, the one chord, C major, it's built by taking C, skipping D, taking E, skipping F, and taking G. So we stack thirds. We start with our root note of the chord, and we go up a third, and then we go up another third. So, uh, next thing would be you know, D minor, would be D, F, and A. I know I'm going really fast. E minor would be E, G, and B, et cetera, et cetera. So I've made other videos talking about how to build chords. We're not going to get super in depth of that. You should know that by now, okay? That should be a given. You need to know all of the diatonic triads that are in any given key that you're playing in. So now that we understand that, we're actually going to go to the next page. So we're going to rewrite the scale. And I'll explain how in just a second. So just like how every single one of the notes in this major scale can have a chord built off of it, we can also then, in conjunction with that, rewrite the scale starting from the note of the chord, starting from the root note of the chord. So for example, if we start the major scale, we're using the same notes, mind you. We're not changing any notes. We're just kind of changing the order that they're coming in. So if you notice, the top one here is the one chord. So the one chord is a C major chord. So if we write the scale starting from C, well, it's just the normal major scale, right? Nothing special there. But now, for example, if we go to the two chord, okay, we can rewrite the scale starting from D instead. And now when we do that, we also treat D as our new first note. So we actually change the numbers going along with it. So we're not changing any of the notes, but we are starting a scale from a different place and we're changing the numbers that go with it. How are we changing the numbers? Well, we're actually just either adding flats or sharps next to the numbers. How are we adding the flats and the sharps next to the numbers? Well, it comes from actually comparing what we get to 
the D major scale. So we're starting a scale from D, okay? And we end up with D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? So again, it's the C major scale starting from D. However, when we rewrite the numbers, we have to actually know what a D major scale would be. So now we're thinking of actually a different key. So if we had a D major scale, this is why it's really important to know how to spell out all of your major scales, all 12 keys, because if you can't, then you're not gonna be able to do this. But if we had a D major scale, there would be an F sharp and a C sharp in the scale. But there is no F sharp and C sharp here because, well, we started with a C major scale and that has no sharps and no flats. So in comparison to a D major scale, it actually has a flat three and a flat seven because again, there should have been an F sharp there if it was a D major scale, but it's not an F sharp. It's an F natural, which is a half step lower. So we think of it now as, okay, this is the flat three. And then same thing with the C. There should have been a C sharp there if we're thinking of the D major scale, but now instead there's a C natural and it's the flat seven. So actually a lot of people would know this concept as what's called modes. You've heard of it before, modes is taking a scale but starting from a different note. However, we're gonna go one level deeper that most people don't go with modes, okay? So when you do this, when you write out all the quote unquote modes or basically just the scale starting from the root note of each one of the chords we can find in the scale. Again, we have to relate this to the chord. It's not just a scale, but it's a scale that has a chord attached to it and all those chords that you see in that column over there. So this has a D minor chord attached to it because D minor is the two chord and then we get that kind of scale that goes along with it. However, now we should start to delineate between the chord tones and the non-chord tones that we have available to us. So let's actually go back actually to the first one, the normal major scale starting from C, and now this is actually why all of those notes in the fretboard diagram there are green. So if we look at the C, the one, the three, and the five is C, E, and G. C, E, and G are the notes that are in our C major chord. So those are our chord tones. So if I'm playing on a backing track or a song that's in the key of C, and there happens to be a C major chord happening at that time, that means that these notes those green notes there, those are going to be our, what we think of as like safe notes to land on. Why? Because they're literally part of the chord. There's no possible way they can sound bad because they're part of the chord. But then the black notes, those are our non-chord tones. So our non-chord tones are gonna be, by the way, it doesn't matter which one of these chords that we're dealing with, whether it's the C, the D minor, the E minor, the F, the G, any of them, our one, three, and five are gonna be our safe notes. And then the two, four, six, and seven, we can still play them, but we may have to be a little bit more careful with them, okay? So if we notice here, now the on the C chord, on the C chord, the D, the F, the A, and also the B are what we call non-chord tones. Now I've talked about this before. There's also such thing as seventh chord. So it depends kind of what style you're playing, whether or not you're gonna consider the seventh to be a chord tone. If I'm playing jazz, the seventh actually is a chord tone. And now you're just basically left with uh, D, F, and A would be our non-chord tones. But with, regardless, 
the seventh can be a little bit wishy-washy like if i'm playing like rock potentially uh again the idea here though is not that we can't use these notes ever the idea is that we have to be a little bit careful with these notes okay so when we're thinking of a scale we need to think of the non-core tones versus the core tones this is the right way to think about a scale when we happen to be playing over a chord progression. So let's say now we wanted to play over the five chord here. So now we have to kind of reorient our thinking because we're still in the same key, but now we're going to have different chord tones versus non-chord tones. So for example, now G is going to be our root note. So let's make G our root note. And now all of a sudden we have G, B, and D are our chord tones. So now you see the green notes actually changed. So now if you notice G, B, and D are our one, three, and our five in the chord. Like, just like I said, so always the one, three, and five. And of course, on the minor chords, it's gonna be one flat three and then a five. And then actually even on this one down here, the B diminished chord, that one's gonna be one flat three flat five. Those are your chord tones. But this is a very common chord movement is actually between these two chords, the one chord and the five chord. That's actually sort of our most basic form of what we call tension and release. So our one chord, is our sort of home base and then the five chord creates a little bit of tension one five one so it's really important to be able to get familiar with this concept over just a couple of chords a super duper easy chord progression so now all of a sudden if i'm soloing over a g chord i'm thinking about mostly these g chord tones And the idea here is that we're also going to use this information to end our phrases on chord tones. So we can use all of these notes in the scale like I've been saying. But if I'm playing on a G chord, I wanna land on one of those green notes there. That's a chord tone. So this is the right way to think about scales. So like when I'm soloing over a chord progression, let's say I'm soloing over that chord progression I just mentioned, one, five, one. Well, I will sort of reorient my thinking every single time the chord changes. I will not be thinking, oh, I'm changing keys. Oh, I have to use a new scale. No. I'm thinking I have the same scale, I have all the same notes available to me, but I'm gonna put more emphasis on those chord tones. So for example, let's just go back one more time to the C note here, or to the C chord rather with the C chord tones. Now you see that again, the green notes change. So kind of in my mind, it's like the green notes, those chord tones, they're changing with every single chord. And one of the best ways, by the way, for you to learn how to do this better is to start by playing a solo over a progression that you're working on with only the one, three, and five, only the triads. So this is one thing I have people do a lot is play a solo with only triads and then when you get really used to only playing a solo with the triads then it makes a lot more sense or once you add back in the other notes from the key sometimes it's confusing to do right off the bat because it's just too much stuff all the time so you got to just completely strip away all those non-core tones but then add those back in there after you've gotten really comfortable with the triads so for example i'm going to play a solo now and i'm going to 
play over a backing track that is literally just a C chord and a G chord. One and five, one and five. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna end my phrases. I'll start just by playing only triads like I was just talking about, and then I'll add back in the full entire scale, but I'm gonna end my phrases on chord tones, on those green notes that I'm talking about. So let's hear what it sounds like. And I'm just gonna stay in this area of the fretboard too. I don't want it to be too confusing. So now I'm landing on the D, the G, B, and D notes. Now I'm back to those C's, E's, and G's. So now I'm gonna add back in all the notes from the scale. So I'm ending, all those notes I'm holding are the chord tones. So that note, F went down to E. So I hope that you get the idea. It's really a simple concept, but sometimes it needs to be broken down really, really far for you to understand it well. So go through that chart, take a screenshot of that little chart right there and try to memorize that stuff so that next time you're playing on a chord progression in the key of C, you can go, okay, let me find, if I'm playing in an A minor chord, okay, let me find all my A minor triads and then think of what are the notes that are around the chord. And you should also try to remember those numbers. So for example, if I go back to the G chord, let's make the G a root note, you can actually think of those other modified intervals I was talking about. So look, the G, now our G is the root, B is the third, D is the fifth, but then you have A is gonna be the second, so you, that A has a certain sound to it. The second has a kind of character to it. And actually, pretty much on every chord, the second is gonna have the same type of effect. Unless it's, for example, like on the three chord, the three chord is a flat second. And that has a completely different character than a regular second. So then also, on the G chord, now the C is the fourth, right? Remember C was the root on a C chord, but now C is actually the fourth on a G chord. And that's the one you gotta be careful with because if you notice, look at that. C is right next to B, which is the third. So a lot of times on major chords, that fourth, because it's right next to the third, it sounds very tense and it wants to resolve downwards to the third. It doesn't sound good like 99% of the time to just sit on the fourth on a chord. So you got A is your second, C is your fourth, and then you got E is your sixth. The sixth can oftentimes actually sound really, really good. Uh, be careful with the flat six on the sixth chord. Unlike the A minor chord, you gotta be careful with playing an F. Why? Because it's a half step away from E, which is the fifth of that chord. So you start to like categorize this in your mind. Okay, my roots, thirds, and fifths, they all sound really good. And then you start to think of the non-chord tones and think of which ones you like. So of the non-chord tones, definitely lots of seconds I like to play for sure. Uh, fourths, those I'm very, very careful with. I'm not gonna sit on them. I'll still play them for sure. 
but I'm gonna make sure I resolve it. And then six, six are always really good. Just be careful with the flat six if you find that on a chord. Natural six, those are fantastic. And then sevenths, it depends kind of on what style I'm playing, but sevenths I, most of the time are actually gonna sound quite good as well. Uh, I actually played that a few times uh, on the G chord. I was playing that flat seven there on the G chord. That flat seven, really really wants to resolve down to actually e the third on the c chord once the chord progression switches back if you enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe to the channel right now hit the notification bell so that you actually see my videos subscribing is not good enough youtube won't show you the videos unless you have the notification bell turned on and make sure you drop a thumbs up down below so that more people can see this video and we can level up more people's soloing to their maximum potential. So if you want to learn how to master the guitar fretboard so you can learn every single one of these triads, every single place on the fretboard so you can use them to play awesome solos. And then on top of that, learn all the keys that you need to be able to navigate all over the entire fretboard and every single other thing that you need to know, make sure you head on over to jamsville.com right now and check out the Jamsville GPS fretboard fundamentals course. You need to get this course. If you have any struggles whatsoever with your fretboard fundamentals and finding this stuff quickly, then you have no business not having this course. You need to get it immediately if you don't know how to do this stuff. But if you can't afford the course or you just want to check out more stuff for free, then make sure you check out this video over here where I'm going to show you how to find all of your major triads all over the entire guitar fretboard the right way. All right, everybody, until next time, Listen, learn, and jam.